Hey what's up guys it's Apollo Uchiha here back with the next part of what if Naruto was Hashirama's heir and yeah guys before continuing this story please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel and without further ado let's continue with our story. Skip. 3 years later Naruto age 13 nearing 14. Today was the day Naruto would finally become a shinobi of Konoha. A prepared Naruto was ready for the Genin exams today. It had been a journey that started with him crying into the Hokage's ropes when he was 6 up to this very moment now. And boy Naruto was feeling good. Naruto had grown to a nice height of 5 feet 4 inches tall. He even changed his wardrobe due to him becoming an actual shinobi today. Naruto wore a black unzipped tracksuit with 3 orange stripes on each sleeve with a mesh shirt on underneath to finish his outfit. He wore black pants and black sandals. His hair was still identical to the Yondimes and his face matured more to show his age. Naruto had many good things going for him at this point. He was handsome, smart and quite powerful for his age. His training was still progressing at a very great rate. Naruto yielded incredible results over the years under the tooth gauge of Tora Hizanbu sensei. Naruto felt on top of the world and was ready for whatever the shinobi world had in store for him. Naruto chakra reserves only increased at this point. He could easily throw around jutsus after jutsus without feeling the usual effects of exhaustion like other ninjas. Naruto was a chakra monster and it didn't help that his chakra control had only gotten better during the years. It wasn't highly enough to use something like medical ninjutsu techniques which required precise chakra control but it wasn't far off from it either. Naruto also found time to develop into Fuinjutsu sealing techniques. The Sandam was messing around with Naruto after Naruto claimed to want to surpass the Yondam. Risen told him that since the Yondam was a sealing master and if Naruto wanted to truly surpass him, he'd have to become one as well. He didn't expect Naruto to ask him for lessons right after but was sort of happy he did. They met twice a month since Hokage was a busy man but Naruto has done well. His handwriting had become perfect, well at least good enough by Funjutsu standards. There were 10 levels of Funjutsu and Naruto was on level 2, which dealt with storage seals and the efficiency of making them as a storage seal was one of the simplest seals. He had gotten it down to 45 seconds when making one and couldn't progress to the next level until he got it below 30 seconds. Due to his senses training regime, Naruto honed the shinobi basics until he got them down to near perfection. His accuracy with using and throwing shuriken slash kunai became second nature to him. He was now just as accurate on the run blindfolded or in midair as he was standing still. It was a perfect 10 out of 10 on the bullseye. Naruto's Taijutsu blossomed well along with his shuriken skills. Despite still only using his modified academy style, he was still formidable in it. His speed nearly doubled with all the exercises he did and the heavier training weights he was using now. Naruto learned to even add chakra to his strikes to make them slightly more powerful. No, it wasn't to the extreme of one of the famed Tsunari Senju's punches but it blustered his attack strength. Tora had said that in a flat out Taijutsu fight Naruto could best most tune in at his current level. Genjutsu progressed nicely for Naruto as well. He finally got down the two Genjutsu his sensei taught him, one of those being Megan demonic illusion descending hell technique which creates the illusion of a huge fireball falling from the sky towards the target. It is also only a C rank and pretty easy to spot and dispel. His second genjutsu was more effective than his first one. Temple of Nirvana technique which generates sleeping inducing imaginary white feathers that upon being seen make the target fall into a tranquil state of slumber. When it comes to spotting Kenjutsu, Naruto had gotten better and his ability to break them had moved up to a few A ranks. He was fine with that at the moment. Like always, Naruto's ninja progressed the most. So much so that he seemed like a specialist. Yet and still Naruto managed to add a few ninjutsus new of them to his own arsenal, though most were for his still hidden Mokitan. Naruto finally got his water flicker technique barrel ready, no leaves, no smoke. Just a simple after image, it couldn't catch keen eyed or tuning level opponents off guard but it was still something at least. On the element progress or for Dothan, Naruto added only on a few jutsus to his list. 
that jutsu being the powerful earth style earth dragon bullet which creates a mud dragon which proceeds to rapid fire mud bullets at a target naruto still favored doton over suiton and futon and as such use them to the most for suiton naruto added another b rank like his earth dragon water fang bullet which creates a powerful liquid mass brought forth from the water as it becomes compacted and added a spinning motion to increase damage. It was a great jutsu and one that attacked an opponent in a 360 around them with multiple rising fangs like water attacks. In Futon, Naruto finally learned a jutsu for his third element. It was simple but a great technique that would grow as Naruto grew. Windstyle Great Breakthrough was a technique that created a sudden gust of wind that with enough skill could become more than just a C rank jutsu. It's powerful depending entirely on the user. Since awakening his Mokita, Naruto spent the most of time getting better at it as it easily became his favorite element. Mokita had the strength of earth and water fluidity in it. It was the perfect element in Naruto's opinion and Naruto soaked up as much as on it as his sensei could from possibly at the three years of time. Teach him. Naruto already knew that the wood clone technique and had finally perfected it. After the clone technique, Naruto learned the ever versatile wood style great forest technique, which changed one's arm into branches. It could be used to either capture an enemy or there could be sharp stakes added to the end of the branches to add a deadly edge. Another jutsu that Naruto had mastered was wood style wood locking wall, which creates a powerful domed wall made out of interlocking wood pillars and finally Tora taught Naruto his favorite jutsu thus far, wood style nativity of the sea of trees that creates a forest in mere moments and he was only getting better. Naruto also learned his sensei's name, Tenzo. Naruto figured out Tenzo could use Mokitan as well. Upon asking if he and Tenzo had any relations to one another, Naruto learned that Tenzo was a product of an experiment done by Orochimaru that gave him this ability. Despite his ability to use Mokitan, since it is injected into him, he couldn't use it on the same scale as Hashirama. Naruto didn't have the Naruto didn't think that that was a problem for him. His Mokitan was genetically passed down and showed him when he passed Mokitan test for his sensei. When his Mokitan was proven to be more noticeably stronger than his sensei despite just learning it, Naruto had room to grow and his power could match Hashirama's in Mokitan. Given enough time though, after Naruto's 12th birthday, Tenzo decided it was time for the meeting to take place between Jinchuriki and Biju. Flashback. Almost two years ago, Naruto's age 12. You want me to meet the QB? Asked an anxious Naruto. He was not scared or anything, more like excited to finally meet the Biju. Tenzo smiled at Naruto's eagerness and said, Yes, Naruto. I think it's time you set up a relationship with the QB. There's no point in having all that ability and not using it. Naruto was ready. There was a silence for a moment. How do I meet the QB? He asked. Sheepishly looking at his sensei, Tenzo couldn't keep from chuckling at Naruto's response. It's been said that when a Jinchuriki meditates, they can consciously enter their mindscape to interact with their biju. So that's what you're going to do. Have at it. So Naruto did as instructed and sat in the lotus position and clasped his hands together in a ram seal. After about 10 minutes or so of steady breathing, Naruto felt a tug in his mind. When he opened his eyes, Naruto noticed he was in a tunnel. Looking behind him, he saw a mud wall. So, Naruto went down to the path which was forward. After what seemed like an hour, which wasn't a whole second in the real world, Naruto met a cage, a huge cage. After not noticing another presence or any moment behind it, Naruto began to wonder if he went to the correct way. Hello? Naruto asked. But after no response, Naruto thought he did something wrong and was about to leave until an eye opened. A giant red little eye. The other opened as well. And finally, the shadow covered a massive box with nine tails lifted. So, this is my Jinchuriki. Only comes to meet me, I see, said QB after staring at Naruto. Uh, yes, I am. My name is Senju Naruto, and I am happy to finally meet you, Naruto said with a smile. Hmm. Normally, I'll tear you the shreds just because, but your chakra is very calming. And it's soothing. Not to mention this case and seal keeping me from doing so. So, in the meantime, I'll humor you replied the QB as it placed its head on its crossed arms. Naruto didn't show outwardly a reaction to the prospect of being torn to shreds, but he did gulp on the inside. Well, I just wanted to get to know you better. You've been in here for 12 years and I still not know anything about you besides what legends say, said Naruto as he continued. Well, when I was researching the Biju, I found out there are other eight 
like you in the world and one thing I noticed was that the EGB has a name, Chicago. So it made me wonder, do all of you have names? If so, what's yours? The QB became shocked. It had been all able to hear what the boy sensei had said this visit would be for and thought his Shichurgi would just come in here demanding power. So what QB didn't knew was how to react to Nard's question. You could hear the surprise in his voice. You, a kid for the first human to ask if I have a name for as long as I have existed in this world. For that, I thank you, said the QB as he became more interested in his container, Kurama. My name is Kurama. Naruto couldn't keep the smile off his face that had started better than expected for him. Well, Kurama, if I may, why did you attack Konoha? said Naruto as he held a stern face. He always wanted to know, since it never added up to him, that the QB just would attack out of nowhere. To be honest, a man with Sharingan manipulated me just because I'm near omnipotent. I don't go around destroying places just because I can. So while hypnotized by this masked man, he set me upon your village until your Yonda managed to seal me into you. Well, it's a good thing to know you didn't attack Konoha on your own violation or that you're not a homicidal Biju hellbent on destruction. Can you explain why this place looks like this? I thought it'd be more complex like the seal on me, said Naruto as he thought it looked like a sewer. It's not a sewer, kid, said Naruto as Naruto looked shocked but then remembered he was in his mind. So obviously his thoughts could be heard here and for why it looks like this I cannot say. Though it is cozier in here and with your Mokitan infused chakra circulating throughout this place, permitting the air here as well. Well, as long as you're comfortable, then I'm okay with it. Now down to the nifty gritty of why I'm here. My sensei sent me here to somehow find a way to gain access to your chakra. I figured we can become a partners or something. You do realize that with your Kekigenka, you could just steal my chakra at will, right? Yet you still ask me to use it. Asked a confused QB. I wouldn't like it if someone's just stole my chakra. I'd want to ask permission and you know the golden rule. Do un to others as you would have others do unto you. So I decided to ask you if you lend it to me. What a surprising kid. From what I've seen of his life and his thoughts, I can tell he's different from the rest. Maybe I'll give this kid a chance. But mainly because it would be foolish for a Jinchuriki to not have access to his Biju's chakra, thought Kurama before saying, Sure kid, but first there are risks when using my chakra. My chakra is extremely powerful, too powerful for you to wield a lot of it at very current level. At most, you may only be able to use a tail of it while still being able to control it without harming the wrong people. It wouldn't matter even if you could use more. The seal is so tight that only a tail of my chakra is accessible to you at this moment. You have to find a way to loosen it somehow. Even then, you'll have to earn my trust to gain further access to my chakra. Well, can't I just rip that seal's hag off? Naruto said. It's not that simple, kid. This piece of paper means nothing else you loosen the seal itself. Plus, I wasn't going to give you more than one tail in the first place, so don't worry about it for now, said Kurama. Naruto agreed with the Biju and decided he would do all he could to earn Kurama's trust. I mean, if Kurama was there, why wouldn't they be friends? He was just glad that he had been given access to his Biju's power in the first place. After an exchange of goodbye, Naruto left his mindscape. When Naruto returned to the physical world, he noticed Tenzo still standing there looking at him expectantly. Catching the hint, Naruto channeled some of Kyuubi's chakra and entered his Jinchuriki state. Well, what do you think? Asked Naruto as he was now covered in a shroud of reddish-orange chakra. Tenzo became impressed. He didn't believe Naruto would be able to get access to his Biju's chakra, but looks great, Naruto. I can feel the oppressive chakra bearing down on me. But is that as far as you can go? If not, go as far as possible and then tell me how you feel. Naruto nodded his head as channeled a little bit more Kurama's chakra and entered one tail state. Instead of just a flame-like shroud, Naruto cloak morphed into a bubbly red chakra that took on a few shapes like fox, completely with a tail of chakra swishing behind him. I feel incredible. I feel faster and a lot stronger, this chakra. It's full of energy. Life energy. It feels like. Naruto performed the snake hand seal and thought. Wood style. Nativity of sea trees. Instead, Lee trees sprouted from the ground all around Naruto at a much quicker pace than before and were even taller as well. Same Kurama's chakra has its perks. My Mokutan is stronger when using this chakra. I love it, said Naruto as he moved around a little test it out how he felt using it. 
hmm seems we should spar so you being getting used to your cubist chakra right this will help you so not attacking your teammates said tenzo as he readied for naruto's assault let's go wild flashback and good times said kurama in naruto's head naruto and kurama were now on good terms throughout nearly two years of knowing each other it was a weird relationship but then again what wasn't weird about a 13 year old human boy and a fox shaped collection of chakra energy that was given consciousness being friends as naruto was heading to the academy a kind woman outside her shop greeted him hey senju son it's good to see you in the morning today is the day of canon exams correct after a smile and nod from naruto she continued well good luck and do your best i'll be rooting for you said the woman as she waved goodbye with a smile naruto smiled and waved back as he continued towards the academy things changed since he became a senju though it did take a month a few blood test results and the verbal promises of authenticity from their long term hokage for the konoha populace to finally accept naruto's stature as a senju even still he still wasn't the most popular person in konoha a name meant nothing, even the Senju clan name because he still received as the QB that attacked on his birth. But a few people, such as the woman just now, had begun to open up to him. So into his thoughts about his training Krama and Konoha, Naruto didn't realize he was stepping into his classroom. Once he noticed it, he majorly headed towards the open seat next to Sasuke. Sasuke had opened up to Naruto after the beatdown he received that day three years ago. Sasuke had asked if he could train with Naruto and even thanked, and thanked him for helping him awaken his Sharingan. Even though it was accidental, after a few times of training with Naruto and getting to know him, Naruto and Sasuke had become good friends. Best friends, actually. Sasuke improved greatly while training with Naruto. The first thing Naruto taught Sasuke was how to tree and water walk. Naruto claimed that his ninjutsu increased immediately after doing these chakra control exercises. Sasuke knew Naruto was right when he performed his fireball grand fireball jutsu and saw how much bigger and hotter it became. When Sasuke had reawakened his Sharingan, he still only had one Tomo in each eye. But after sparks with Naruto and since Naruto didn't pull any punches against him, it evolved into two Tomo state. Sasuke had eventually started to hit Naruto in the sparks. Though there was still a gap between their skill set and level, Naruto was far stronger than Sasuke wasn't behind to and afraid to admit it. But they were rivals, Sasuke had to catch up. So. As Naruto came to sit down, the two shared a fist bump as they talked about the coming exams. This is the day we start our journey as Konoha's ninja. Hey Sasuke, said Naruto to his friend. Hmm, came the perfect response to anything from the Uchiha. You ready? You won't freeze up again from having flashbacks, right? Asked Naruto as Sasuke had told him about the massacre. He was the first person who Sasuke shared his view of the story with since it happened. Yeah, I'm fine. I'll be good. Can't you... Try to outshine me here. I'm the rookie of the year. Can't let that stop me from becoming a Ganon, said Sasuke with a confident smirk. Psh. I could still kick your rookie of the year as you know. Titles like that mean nothing in the real world, said Naruto in a challenging tone. Sasuke turned his sharing on Ona as he stared at Naruto. You want to test that theory now, said Sasuke. Oh, so you got pink eye with a pretty eye pattern. That doesn't scare me at all. Your body can't keep up with your eyes. I find that hilarious. I had to see a punch coming in super slow mo, and still, no, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Hmm, said the Uchiha, and he began to get mentally prepared for the exams. Meanwhile, Naruto could hear Krama chuckling in his mind with pink eyes, said repeatedly behind and between laughters. Out of nowhere, a red and purple blur came bristling into the room at roughly the same time. I win! came the shout of one Sakura Haruno as she stepped through the doorway and Ino by the side. You wish the only hope you had in winning was because your forehead gave you a reach of advantage. Came the snappy reply of Ino. You're just mad because Sasuke wouldn't date piggies like you. Rebuted Sakura. Before Ino could reply, one of the other civilian girls shouted, Why would we want Sasuke and when Naruto is way cuter? Have you seen those adorable whisker marks? All as Ino mentally agreed and was glad that she didn't say the same thing. Ino had wanted Sakura to become better and she knew the competition would help so that why she kept going along with his whole Sasuke feud. Even though Ino crushed on Naruto now. Ino liked Naruto ever since she was 9. One day Naruto handed her the brightest purple lilac she had ever seen and upon seeing it, noticed his eyes matched the lilac which was her favorite color. She had found out that Naruto liked flowers and anything dealing with plants. She also got to spend time with him when he volunteered at her family's flower shop. The flowers always seemed to look better when he came by. Plus, he had the prettiest eyes ever and they were her favorite color. 
Did you really think that? Thought Ino as she looked at Naruto chatting with Sasuke. Her thoughts ended in the moment Iruka Sensei entered and ordered everyone to take a seat. After a long, adorous speech from him, the exam started. Iruka and his assistant Mizuki began handing out the written exam. Mizuki was an average height and built similar to Iruka. He had white neck length hair and wore the standard tuning outfit of Konoha. To complete his outfit, he wore his forehead protector bandana style around his neck. Naruto had always been able to sense the bad vibes coming from Mizuki. Naruto never told anyone about it due to him just believing the prejudices about his Jinchuriki status. So, Naruto just let Mizuki hate on him. Naruto loves his haters anyway. After the simple written exam that Naruto did the bare minimum to pass, it was time for the practical exams which consisted of a Taijutsu spar with an instructor and demonstration of three basic techniques. Many of the students did well in this part of the exam. Sasuke had even managed to get a few nice hits on Yuruka and got 9 out of 10 for his efforts. Kiba finished with an 8 out of 10 and so did Hinata due to her gentle fist style. Choji received a 7 with his clan techniques. Shino got 6, Ino and Sakura and Shikamaru all got 4, though Shikamaru forfeited once he got his 4th point, which was just enough to pass. Then we had Naruto turn, who somehow got the ironic luck to get paired with Mizuki. Naruto could already tell that Mizuki would harm him any way he possibly, but Naruto wasn't worried in the slightest. He welcomed the challenge. What occurred became known as the greatest ass whooping ever given by an academy student to a tuning instructor in history. Mizuki never got to move. Naruto was on him too quickly and the match ended as quickly as it started. After Iruka said Hajime, not a second later and surprised Sunshin that Mizuki couldn't even counter and he not been confident, overconfident at least, Mizuki felt pain. Left jab to the face right across followed by a roundhouse kick but before Mizuki could go to the ground, Naruto planted another kick that sent Mizuki carrying past Iruka. Definitely 10 out of 10. But since Mizuki was out cold, Iruka just continued with the ninjutsu proportion alone. Shinoburame passed. Choji Akamichi passed. Sakura Harno barely passed. Ninata Yuga passed. Kiba and Azuka passed as well. Shikamaru Nara passed. Naruto Senju passed as well. Sasuke Uchiha passed. Ino Yamanaka average but passed. There were also another 18 civilian children who passed the exams as well. After Iruka gave another speech on how proud he was of his students and what life would be like now that they are shinobis of the leave, he left his students to leave. The academy was over now and now it was time to meet their sensei, which was tomorrow. We made it, said Naruto with a smile as his face as he tried his black forehead protector around his forehead, a smile that everyone in the group of nine recuperated. Well, with Shino you couldn't see, but Naruto could sense he was happy. We should celebrate. We should go to anyone who wants to go to BBQ, said a happy Choji, as he cut on Naruto. Troublesome, but I'm in with Choji, said Shikamaru with a smirk. After a choice of agreements, the entire gang that would later on be dubbed as the Rookie Nine headed to one of Choji's family owned restaurants. They all stared it, started to go there and shared a great time at the restaurants. They knew that this would be the last time they'll be all together for a while, once they separated into teams with their sensei. Eventually, they all went their different ways. Choji and Shikamaru headed to Shikamaru's house. Kiba and Shino and Sasuke went back to their respective house. Ino and Sakura disappeared to Sakura's house, and Hinata had politely excused herself back to her clan compound. Link break. Several hours later, a few hours had passed and Naruto began to wander around Konoha aimlessly, determining what to do. It seemed... The sun was going down soon, so he'd be able to watch the sunset from the Hokage Monument. With the sunshine, Naruto sat atop of the Yondam's head. Naruto felt at peace. He felt good and nothing would change at all. After the sun went down, Naruto decided to head back to home to get some rest before tomorrow on his way. A shinobi went flying past him and nearly crashed into him. Naruto was turning around to say sorry when he noticed the ninja had kept going. Wait a minute, that's Mizuki-sensei. Wonder what he's in a rush for. Oh, well wait, is that a scroll on his back? Look familiar. Where have I ever seen that scroll before? Asked Naruto in his head. Then it hit him. That was the Hokage scroll of sealing. The scroll that contains many dangerous techniques that are mostly forbidden. But why did Mizuki have it? Why would Mizuki head outside the village with that scroll? A scroll that only Hokage could touch. Oh yes, he's stealing it. And you're still sitting here trying to figure out what he's doing. It's obvious, said an irritated Kurama. Naruto had the decency to look sheepish. He made sure no one was watching him as he created would clone and gave instruction to alert the Hokage. After taking care of that, Naruto immediately pursued Mizuki to stop him. 
forest near edge of Konoha, Mizuki had never been happier in his lifetime. The Forbidden Scroll he had finally gotten a hold of it. Now all Mizuki had to do was hand it to Orochimaru and he would get the power he sought. Mizuki started to get excited at how he was so close to his dreams, however he halted when he sensed the Cubist brat appearing in front of him. Mizuki, he said with a serious face, the night just got better. Mizuki said with a sadistic grin, the god must love me to have you, of all people, show up here right before I have to leave. I can finally drop the act and kill you before all these years, Fox boy. Didn't I just thrash him earlier today? Is he crazy? Thought Naruto with a deadpan. It would seem so, said Krama with a chuckle. Don't give me that look, demon. You know why the people of this village hate you? Said Mizuki with an evil glitter. It doesn't matter. Naruto, whose face hadn't changed since it first arriving, said. It's because you're the QB. You're the piece of shit fox who assaulted Konoha years ago, and now your pathetic demon ass is going to die because I'm going to kill you. Said Mizuki dangerously as he pulled out an oversized shuriken from his back. Naruto, I don't care how you do it. Kill this guy. Who does he think he is talking about here? Said an agitated Kurama, who was aggressively trying to send Chakra into Naruto to get him to tear Mizuki apart. I just can't kill him. I'm sure Gigi will know what to do with him to appease your needs. Said Kurama. Said Naruto to Kurama as he denied Kurama's Chakra. Are you done? Asked Naruto in a bored tone. What? Asked a slightly confused Mizuki as he thought that the boy would have a mental breakdown at the news. I already knew that what sealed inside me. But I am a canon, canon of Konoha. Naruto sent you and nothing is going to change that. Before I crop stomp you something serious, I have to know. Why did you steal the scroll? For power? Or was it for to give you to someone else? Said Naruto sharply. It seems I have to give you a little credit. But even a foolish is right some of the time. Since you will be dead in shortly, why not tell you? Lord Orochimaru tasked me with this retrieval of the scroll, and in return I would be his right-hand man. It would be give me great power, and I would be able to show everyone that I'm strong. Mizuki said madly as he threw the shuriken nard Orochimaru, one of Konoha's biggest traitors. The same one that performed the experiments on Tenzo-sensei. Thought Naruto as he sidestepped the shuriken. This is a terrible mistake on your part, Mizuki. I cannot forgive a traitor for my village. Said Naruto as he performed the ram hand seal and slammed both of his palms to the ground. Earth style, mud wall. Thought Naruto has a mud wall sprung behind Mizuki. Mizuki briefly turned his head around and looked up in awe at the jutsu used by the demon. He had no idea he could use ninjutsu of this caliber. In a short amount of time, it took Mizuki to turn his head around and Naruto clapped his hands together and was ready to fire off another jutsu. Water style, water bullet technique. Naruto fired a huge amount of water bullets at Mizuki, who braced himself for impact as it plowed into him. Due to Naruto's mud wall behind him, Mizuki didn't travel for far behind, impacting all the wall behind him. As Mizuki slowly overcame the effect of the jutsu, he, seated, he steadied himself as a kunai in hand he charged at Naruto. Naruto pulled out his kunai and clashed with Mizuki's own. Mizuki, being physically stronger and taller than Naruto, had advantage over Naruto and eventually managed to dig his kunai into Naruto's chest. Mizuki smirked upon seeing Naruto's shocked face, but that quickly disappeared as Naruto reverted to mud replacement. He barely had time to turn around as to see Naruto coming right at him. Mizuki felt every bit of air, leaving him from the Kurama-powered elbow to the stomach. Mizuki fell on the, his hands and knees trying to regain his breathing, but before he could recover, he met unconsciousness as his body hit the ground from Naruto's dual hand axe punch to his back. When Naruto noticed Mizuki stopped moving, he relaxed a little and went over to retrieve the scroll. He then stomped Mizuki one more time to keep with his word of crop stomping him. Naruto tied Mizuki up and carried him back with the scroll to the Hokage Tower. Hokage Tower, Hiruzen stood in his office when Naruto came in and told him about the scroll of sealing incident and grew worried. However, he visibly relaxed when he was just a crone and the real Naruto was already in pursuit of Mizuki. He knew, he knew Naruto could easily handle Mizuki. But he did send Anbu out to make sure the scroll made it back and that Naruto was okay. Risen knew that Mizuki had grown complacent and his skill had dulled it, so Naruto would have no trouble in defeating him. It was proven right when Naruto came into view with a Shunshin carrying both Mizuki and the scroll of ceilings. You know, that was very pretty fast, Shunshin Naruto kun. Pretty much faster than I can do it said Hiruzen with a smile as he was glad Naruto had come back and harmed and with the scroll. Thanks, Gigi. Well, I caught Mizugi, beat him down and brought back the scroll, said a cheer Naruto as he fist bumped his clone who just disappelled himself then. Then Naruto got serious and said, Orochimaru is in involved in Mizugi's treachery. The news caught 
Well, the Hokage to startle. Anything Rochimaru related was horrible news to Konoha. His favorite student had developed into a major pain in the ass and it was his fault for not ending it all those years ago. Ah, I'm too old for this, thought Hiruzen with an edging sigh. Nevertheless, the scroll was back and Naruto caught the traitor so he could be interrogated for more information. He might even let Ibiki put out all of his tricks on this one. Hiruzen shivered at the thought of he didn't know how Ibiki became a sadistic as he is but he was glad that he was not on the other side of an Ibiki interrogation. That man was one brutal man. With his ways. You didn't peek in the scroll, did you? said the Hokage with authority. Of course not, Titi. The scroll is for the Hokage's eyes only, said Naruto with a smile. Good, said the Hiruzen proudly as he realized how much Naruto had grown in the past years. He was well on his own and way to become a great shinobi. Well, thank you, Naruto kun, and I say that on behalf of all Konoha, since what just you did was a great service to the village. Now get ready for your registration and team assignment. I'm so proud of you and good luck. Hi, Hokage Titi sama said Naruto with a mock salute. After that long day, Naruto did nothing but walk in and plop down on his bed, all the while anticipating tomorrow's events. As this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of guys, I hope you like this one and if you do please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Sorry this one is shorter than the previous one. Yeah, I'm just a little tired and my throat is sore. So yeah, I hope you don't mind. Anyways, this is Apollo Chiha and I'm signing out.